Welcome to the second part of the Particles tutorial for the CryEngine 2 Sandbox Editor. So, let's add a second particle to spawn sparks alongside the system we created in the first tutorial. Select your particle effect and click Add Sub Effect. Right click and rename the particle. Now select a texture for the particle. Find spark underscore stretched underscore mono dot DDS. Set texture tiles X and Y to 2 and variant count to 4. To spawn the sparks, go to spawning and set second generation to true. This will cause the child particle effect to spawn the sparks when the parent particle spawns. In this case, that means that the sparks will spawn whenever the fire particle spawns. So, let's increase the spawn count of the sparks to 20. This means each time the fire particle spawns, 20 sparks will spawn. Also set the var random to 0.4. Now set blend type to additive and set the lighting up as you did with the fire particle effect as shown. Next we need to set up a colour curve for the particle effect. Go down to the colour box and open up its additional properties. Click at the start of the VAR particle life box and select a bright orange colour. Click again at the end of the same box and select a dark orange colour. This means that the particle will be bright orange at the start of its lifetime and will fade through to dark orange at the end of its lifetime. Go down to the size section and reduce the size of the effect to 0.05. Now go to the appearance section and turn on Orient to Velocity. This will cause the particle to always orient to the direction it is travelling. Go to the spawning tab again and set the random offset X and Z value to 0.5 and set Y to 0 0.7. To finish things off, go to the Movement section and increase the speed to 2 and var random to 0 0.5. Go to Emitter and change the particle lifetime and var random to 0 0.5, then add a 0 0.2 second spawn delay, which means the sparks will spawn 0 0.2 seconds after the fire entity particles spawn. Let's use a higher quality texture for the fire particle which is animated. Select the fire, then go down to appearance and open up the texture browser. Go to the fire folder and select large underscore animated one dot DDS. Don't worry if your particle effect changes into something that looks a little strange. The new texture is designed as an animated tiling particle meaning each frame of animation of the particle is placed in the same texture as a tile. The first tile of the animation is in the top left and the animation progresses to the right, starting a new line every time the current is full. The last tile in the animation is the furthest right on the lowest row of tiles. So, let's set up this texture to run correctly. Set tiles X and Y to 8. Go to Appearance and set the blend type to additive. This texture is already animated, so we need to turn off the movement parameters. Go to the movement tab and set all movement values to zero. Do the same in the angles tab. Now go back to the appearance tab and let's tweak the Y value to 16 and set the animation frames count to 105. Next, set the particle lifetime to 4.3. As you can see, this makes the fire particle look much more natural. But, because we changed the movement settings for the parent file particle, the child sparks particle also needs to be changed. Select your fire particle and add a speed to your effect to determine the direction of the child spark effect. As we removed the angular randomization on the fire particle, we need to recreate it on the sparks. Change the emit angle to 20 and var random to 1. Now we have a good looking fire particle effect ready to place in your levels. 
This closes the second part of the particle tutorial. For further information, please visit our website crymod.com.